This video will provide an introduction to citing books, articles, and web pages using APA Style. Check out the library's channel for more tutorials to help you with APA Style. When citing a book, you need to find the following information the name of the author, date of publication, title of the book, publisher, and DOI if it has one. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier and it's very important for citing lots of things in APA. It's a long string of numbers and letters that is unique to only this one work. Here are a few examples of what DOIs in books might look like. You'll sometimes see them in newer print books, but they're most common in ebooks. Let's look at a sample book. Most of the needed information can be found on either the title or the copyright page near the front of the book or in the book's record in a library catalog. Here's a book called Uprising, How to Build a Brand and Change the World by Sparking Cultural Movements. Just under that is the author. Sometimes you'll have more than one or an editor instead of an author. On the title page, you'll usually find the publisher, in this case, McGraw-Hill. The date of publication is over on the copyright page, 2012, and I don't see a DOI on this one, so we can just leave that off. Now that we have all the information we need, we can create our citation. APA says to include only the author's last name and initials, not their full first name. Also notice how you only capitalize the first word of the title and the first word of the subtitle, plus any proper nouns, of course. You don't capitalize every word. Citing articles is similar to citing books, except you need a little bit more information. In addition to the author and date of publication, you need the article title, journal title, volume and issue number if applicable, the page range of the article, and the digital object identifier, known as the DOI. Remember, the DOI is a unique string of numbers and letters that points to just this one article. Here are a few examples of DOIs from various articles. If there truly is no DOI, you can just leave it off, but most modern scholarly articles will have one, so look around for it. Let's take a look at an example article. The journal and article titles are listed near the top of the page, but don't be confused by the name of the database that provides the article to us. We don't use that. We can also see the volume, issue, date of publication, and page range of the article. Under the article title, we have the names of both authors. The last thing you'll want to look for is the DOI, which will be a long string of numbers and sometimes letters, but it should clearly say DOI somewhere. APA Style says it should be written in this format so that it's a functioning link, but if it's in some other format, APA tells you to add the correct prefix, https colon slash slash doi.org slash, onto the front. Now that we've gathered all of the information, we can create our citation. Use an ampersand rather than the word and between our two authors, and use the last name and initials of the authors only, not the full first name. Note that the article title is capitalized just like the book title was, where we only capitalize the first word of the title and the first word of the subtitle, plus proper nouns. However, each significant word in the journal title is capitalized because that's a proper noun. Notice also how we format the volume, issue, page numbers, and DOI to match the correct example. Web pages are probably the most difficult citations to create because a lot of the information can be hard to find or missing. Keep in mind that if you can't find much of this information, it's more challenging to validate that you are in fact using a reliable source. If you are missing information, visit this page from the APA Style Guidelines to see how you need to rearrange the citation pieces you do have. Here's the basic format for a web page. First is the name of the author or authors, then the date the information on the page was last published or updated. Because websites are frequently updated, include as much detail as the page gives you. If it tells you the year, month, and or day, include all of that, formatted like this. Then include the title of the specific page you are actually on, in italics, then the name of the source or hosting organization if it's different from the author, and finally the stable link for the page. Let's take a look at this example web page. If we can find an individual's name as an author, that's preferred, but often we don't have one, so APA tells us to use a corporate author, the most specific group or agency which was responsible for creating this content, in this case, the Central Intelligence Agency. The title of the page is usually near the top, but it's not always the most prominent text. In this case, we're viewing the page for Israel, but the title is quite small and easy to miss. If you're not sure, look for things like the website's navigation structure to figure out which title is unique, or you can sometimes get a clue from what name is used in the title that you should see within your internet browser window. In this case, the breadcrumbs here tell me that the World Factbook is a publication, so the unique titles are the individual country pages within it. World Factbook is the source for all of them. If there is a date of publication, usually it is found at the top or bottom of the page. This page has a last updated date, 
if there is no date or the only date is a copyright date that seems to apply to the whole website and not just this specific page, then use N period D period to indicate no date. Now we can create our citation. For a corporate author like this one, you'll want to capitalize every significant word of their name since it's a proper noun, rather than using the abbreviation, in this case CIA. Web page titles are in italics and use sentence case capitalization, just like books, where you only capitalize the first word of the title, subtitle, and proper nouns, then the name of the source is in non-italics font, and finally you end it with the full URL. When you've created all your citations, you then put them all together in the references list. It goes at the end of your paper and should look something like this. The top of your page says References, Centered, and in bold. Double space throughout. Organize all references in alphabetical order, and they should each have a hanging indent. That means the first line of each citation is not indented, but subsequent lines are. If you're not sure how to make all the formatting correct in APA, go here to download and use the correct template documents in Microsoft Word or Google Docs. These already have applied the correct formatting for your full document. In addition to the full list of sources at the end of your paper, you also need to cite sources throughout your paper in the text. This is vitally important to show where each bit of information came from. In order to do this in APA, you always need the author's last name, the year, and sometimes the page number. Or if there's no pages, then something like the paragraph number, section heading, or whatever would help your reader find the original information on the page. You need to include the page number part whenever you use a direct quote, and you can optionally include it for paraphrases if you're only paraphrasing from one page or if it would help your reader to find the section you paraphrased. Here are our sample in-text citations again. If you have two authors, use an ampersand between the two names. You can also have a corporate author, like the Central Intelligence Agency. If it has a common abbreviation, like the CIA does, include that in square brackets the first time you use it, then just use CIA for subsequent citations. For the year, you can list end period, D period if that's all you have. Finally, if you're using a direct quote or paraphrasing from a single page, always include the page number with P period before it, or PP period if it's multiple pages, or the paragraph number or section heading if there are no pages. This page contains some other useful sources and good examples you might want to check out if you get stuck as you're creating your citations. It also has this specific page for citing business information, which will be helpful to you in your upper-level classes when you need to cite those unusual business resources. Don't hesitate to contact the library with any questions about citation. We're happy to help.